Hey everyone, this is I Hate Rivers here. For those of you that don't know me, I've been kicking around the poker scene for about 15 years now. I started off as a sit-and-go grinder and then transitioned to MTTs. I've had pretty good success all along. Uh, I don't think I ever had to put in money other than my first $5 deposit. So on the screen here, you see my graph, and it's pretty much what I aspire everybody in my stable to be doing and any students that I have is to basically try to get your graph as steady as possible while also making the slope as steep as possible. In other words, increasing the amount that you make per game. Even more importantly, increase the amount of money you make per hour. So I want to go into a few things before I start. I want to talk a little bit about the future of online poker. And for any of you that are discouraged, I understand poker is very difficult, variance is a bitch. But what we have here is a very large sample of over 2 million tournaments in games $5 to $45. These are all regulars that I've selected unbiasedly as possible. And you can see that over the last five years, so game zero was 2015, August, the slope of this graph dictates how much money per game players have been making. You don't see much change in this, suggesting that regulars that are around today are making a similar amount per game as they were five years ago. So for those of you that think poker is dead, I would suggest to think again and to just change your mindset a little bit. And that'll be the purpose of a lot of my videos. So. Hopefully you're sold a little bit on continuing to watch and hopefully I can figure out how to adjust your thinking about poker. So why me? Why would you wanna watch my videos now that you're sold on the fact that poker is beatable still? Uh, here you have this same player group, again, uh, shows the 2.4 million games. That's the results in the bottom, making an average profit of $3.50 per game. That's pretty respectful. On the top, you see my results making $13.28 per game with an ROI that is roughly four times larger and an average buy-in that's even lower than the MTT group here. Now, what you'll notice, and some of you might want to say, is that my sample is complete shit. Uh, it's not complete shit, but yes, it is very small in comparison to the 2.4 million games. With that said, I want to break down how I still have a much higher ROI than these players, even if you take out the top 10 biggest scores in that sample of mine, which I think honestly is pretty incredible, like not tooting my own horn about that. I feel like I was surprised when I saw that. So here you have my results on Sharkscope up here. Largest score is 45,000 roughly. So just going down and adding these up real quick. We got 45, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105, so that's that's my 10 biggest results add up to about 105,000. If you take that out of this total, I'm still left with, what would that be, $35,000 over 11,000 games. That's roughly, I guess it is a little bit lower than, than the, the other player group, but still pretty comparable, even when you take out my 10 largest scores in that sample. So. Hopefully that's selling you on the fact that I'm doing something right and that you can follow me and follow my videos and hopefully learn some of these little things that I'm doing differently than other regs. And I will say that there's hundreds, if not thousands of players that are better than me. And that's not why I want you to watch my videos. I want you to watch them because I feel like I'm kind of bobbing and weaving and I don't really knock anybody out, but I'm kicking around, I make money where other people don't. I find ways to beat the game that others do not, even without as much skill as them. So let's get into the actual topics that I wanted to discuss. All right, so a lot of people think that the way to make your poker career the best or the way to make the most money is just playing good poker. Yes, obviously this is probably the most important thing, but it's not the only thing. And then other people might go one step further and say, playing good poker and having a good schedule just prints money. And yes, now we are 
well along the way to becoming a successful, profitable player. But did we achieve max EV with just these two things or are we just scratching the surface? And that's where I think I come in and that this is where my specialty lies, is finding the unique ways to add extra EV to our yearly salary to reduce variance and to make sure that at the end of the day, when other regs are failing, we are not one of them and we're thriving where they're not. So now there's only two things on this screen right now. Remember that. Now this is what I would advocate for. This is a large list of topics that I would like to discuss in future videos. Uh, I don't know if I'll make every single one of these videos, and this is probably only about half of the things. I made this list in about 15 minutes of just random things that came to my mind of things that many people that are watching this video are missing. Purpose of my lesson, as I pretty much already discussed, is to retrain your thinking about poker. And more than anything, just try to get you to think about, of course you have to play good poker. You're gonna have to do that separately. I'll, I'll teach you some good poker in my videos, of course, but it's gonna come side by side with all these other factors. And in the end, hopefully, you, you realize that increasing your chance of being around in poker, just like in a tournament, where if you're playing in the softest tournament in the world, you don't take every single edge you can. Your tournament life is so valuable. You're, you're gifted chips every few hands by these terrible fish. You don't want to risk getting all in with queens versus ace king in the first hand, unless if it's a re-entry maybe. <laughs> but uh, in, in the game of poker, where poker we have one poker career, and if we bust it, if you have unlimited re-entries where you've unlimited amount of money and support and everything, which probably none of you do have all of those unlimited resources, we have to treat our poker career with a little bit more respect than some people do. And I've seen hundreds of people around me, uh, like people that I've known, just regs that I used to see, just fall off the spectrum. They're not around anymore. So I think more than anything, that's the one thing that I can do for you that other regs, other regs can do it, other coaches can also do it. I think I could do that better. That's that's my main marketing point, and hopefully I sell you on this throughout my videos. And of course, I'll do my best to increase your ROI. Any video on Player Elite is most likely going to do the same thing. Uh, hopefully, I get you there just as fast or faster. Uh, increase your happiness, healthiness. I mean, those things kind of go hand in hand. But I promise you, that when your graph becomes super stable and there's almost no variance there, and you're having more winning days than losing days in MTTs, when your R equals zero is close to one, and what I mean by that is basically a perfect correlation between, I mean, I guess, I don't know if I can apply the statistics here, but you don't want your graph looking like a completely uncorrelated game between when you sit down and play and your results. You wanna kind of know what to expect. I promise you your happiness is gonna increase immensely when day in and day out, you have a much finer line, a much more stable outcome of how your session is going to end. And in, in the end, if you can do that and also increase your yearly expectation, you're winning on levels that other MTT players just are not going to be able to do. And of course, obviously, I want to decrease variance. I feel like I've done that as well as any regular in the MTT world. Uh, as, as you looked at my graph, there wasn't that much variance. Even, in a, even if you looked at a microcosm of my graph, in any specific area of this graph, there's not many downswings. So I've done everything I can to insulate myself from variance. Have I lost a little bit of EV in doing so? Probably. Have I managed to have steady money and then put that money into things outside of poker and increase my yearly expectation, all things considered? Yes. So don't forget about that. Anyway, just touching on some of these topics I want to get to, and I'm not going to get into them now but you can kind of scan them. Hopefully some of these are, are really interesting to you. And I'm not sure the order at which I'll, I will be releasing these and which ones. I would love any feedback for what you'd like to see first. I don't know if Playerly is gonna allow people to comment directly on these videos or for me to see, but I would love this to be a little bit interactive with everybody that wants to see more videos from me. I would even take some suggestions of things not on this list. And I feel like I could probably do a video on most things. And yeah, so maximizing your time, create max hourly rate. 
point is, don't waste your time doing little things that don't matter much. All these embellishments, all these little leveling wars that you get yourself into, these spots at final tables where you end up studying for three hours trying to figure out if you made the right play in this very dynamic spot where you're probably not going to see it again for six months, that's not worth spending three hours on. So I, I, I'm going to make a video on that and not only just where to not waste your time, I already gave you an example, but where to actually spend your time. We already looked at the future of online poker and I guess now I can't make that video. So um, you're welcome. And uh, well, I, I could discuss that for high stakes, mid stakes. Um, I just did low stakes for now, but uh, arriving at the correct number of tables and sites, I'm not going to get into this yet. FGS versus ICM playing to your strengths, the reshove ranges, don't fuck with the shorties. Hopefully I'm allowed to swear in this video. If not, I apologize. There we go. Most useful study tools, deal making, importance of backup internet, screen space. Screen space basically means you only have so much your brain can do while you're playing. Only so many things you can click, only so many spots on your screen that you can put a table and eventually your brain is gonna be overloaded and you are going to have to decide what to do with this screen space. Edge passing, this is a really tough one and is gonna be very different for each player. And I wanna discuss short, uh, briefly that a lot of these concepts are gonna be different for everybody and I do private coaching. I can take on any specific player and I need to set my rates with, with player elite. I also run a stable for anybody interested in, in uh, getting backing. I think Clarely is going to allow me to, to put some contact information in there. River Staking is my stable. You can see our avatar here. And shortcuts for simplifying calculations. Looking in the cracks for money. Basically finding money where, where other people don't look. Never guessing. Uh, as you saw, I'm pretty methodical about how I go about the poker as a job, you can see that I have large databases to look at the future of online poker. I'm constantly analyzing the, the results of my players. And I just feel like I've been around long enough and know math enough to really not have any reason to be guessing. So definitely make a video on that. Open mind for finding good tournaments and adapting, networking, just the importance of having other people that can provide value to you until you've gotten fully submersed in the poker world. I feel like a lot of people have no idea how many little things they're missing. Hopefully this poker series of videos that I'm making will open your eyes to some of those things that you're missing. But the more you, the more you get to know about poker, the more you realize you don't know. I'm just scratching the surface on the amount of things that I can learn from poker. And I've been around for 15 years doing it full time. And even managing my stable has been enough work to put in over 100,000 tournaments. Uh, early game versus mid game versus late game. Just talking about the difference in strategy in all these different situations. Short stack play, bounty access, bounty strategy, stack distribution, bubble play. Uh, playing appropriate ranges. I mean, this is kind of getting into the GTO solutions a little bit. Attacking different stack depths, when to limp and why, using HUD. Utilizing shark scope. This is one that I've done really well with, I think. And you already saw kind of the example that we started with, with the, the player group that I showed. Creating a schedule for max EV, order of operations and difficult decisions. When you have to figure out, is this guy bluffing or is he not? And it could be either. There's a lot of different things that you can look at. If you are looking in the wrong place, you are not going to solve this in the amount of time that you have while your other nine tables are popping up in your face. So knowing where to look in a quick, precise uh, amount of time will help you to make the best decision there. Noting players, population tendencies, hand history reviews. Uh, this is something I do very frequently, especially in the, the private lessons if anybody's interested. Uh, projecting thoughts. It's very common for somebody that's been spending all their time thinking about poker a certain way, assuming that other people, for example, fish, 
will approach a hand in the same way that they do, when in reality, that's not necessarily true and often holding you back immensely from, if you want to catch a fish, you might want to think like a fish. <laughs> in other words, uh, off table investing. And yeah, just I mentioned this briefly. If you're able to make steady money and you can start putting away money, you can start turning money into more money away from poker and really improve your quality of life. And the last thing, and maybe one of the most important thing is just knowing your brain, knowing how you think about the game, knowing what your, what your advantages are and using those and knowing what your disadvantages are and hopefully let increasing your ability to, um, not have as many disadvantages, but also just avoiding them when possible. So yeah, hope you guys like this. Thanks.